Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da ahabita fillah Shaykh Abdul Salam ibn Burgess Rahimahullah ta'ala Had a very beneficial treatise called Nasa'ih li shabab al-sunnah Advice to the youth uh, of Ahl Sunnah. And I'm just going to give us the general advice without even, you know, this is a book, a treatise that the Sheikh wrote, Rahmatullah Alayhi Rahmatan Wasiya, which gives us general advice on what we need to focus on as Salafi youth, as Shabab Ahl Sunnah, our priorities. And these are, this is very general advice, but it's just to keep us focus on the utmost priority doesn't mean many other things in life that we have to focus on life is complex but how do we keep ourselves focused on Allah's deen the sheikh mentioned rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan wasi'a he said a nasihatu ula hatha fima ala talib al-ilm shar'i he said the first advice is encouragement to seek Sharia knowledge, knowledge of the Sharia. And we've already said many times, for example, the Prophet ﷺ said, Talib al-Am faridatun ala kulli Muslim wa Muslima. Seeking uh, religious knowledge is, uh, is an obligation on every Muslim male and female. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. The second piece of advice the Sheikh mentioned, uh, The second piece of advice is encouragement or calling to the importance of practicing and following knowledge, practicing knowledge with good deeds. Uh, meaning that the, as the Salaf used to say, thamarat al-ilm al-amal or al-amal thamarat al-ilm that knowledge, the fruit of, uh, the fruit of knowledge is deeds. So meaning that you practice the knowledge that you have. So those should be the fruits. The fruits, we shouldn't see that someone compiled, they memorized a lot, but we see that they're the worst of creation in practice and in deeds. You have some people who have memorized a lot, but you see that they have the worst speech and the worst ways of relating to other Muslims and other, hum uh, other people, in fact. So we want to see from that knowledge, we want to see deeds. The third piece of advice, a nasiha ta thalith, a nasiha ta thalitha, dhakira fima wujub al iltizami bi kitabi la wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tahrim taqdeem al rai wal hawa ala kitabi wa sunnah. The third piece of advice the Shaykh mentioned, he said, it's important to mention. The obligation to adhere to the Quran, the Book of Allah, and the Sunnah of the Messenger of His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that it is impermissible, it is haram, tahrim, to make your intellect the focal point where you precede the text, precede the text with your opinions and your desires over the Quran and the Sunnah. So very important that we, that this is what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah <clears throat> from Ahl Bid'ah as far as a minhaj. When we say the term minhaj, one of the references to minhaj is referring to the way you understand Islam, the way you understand the Quran and the Sunnah. What is your minhaj? Ah, your minhaj is the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah, meaning that you try to adhere to the way the first three generations adhered and understood Islam. So that's your minhaj. Whereas you had other sects that began to appear even during the first, <coughs> first and second generation 
of Islam, especially the second and third, where the uh, groups who began to use their intellect and their desires over the text. And this is why you have, for example, the ones we're the most familiar with in this time, the Ashadis, for example. You have them in the UK, you have them all over the world. And some say that they're the most, among most Muslims have some uh, Ashadi understanding as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. The point being a habitifillah, for example, I'm gonna give you a concrete example. The Ashadis, for example, when we look at where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa, that the most merciful rose above his throne. Ahlul Sunnah, we take that on, on its apparent meaning. The Ashadis, for example, they say, no, no, no. If you say he rose, that means he went from, he's in a place. And if you say he's in a place, that means he's confined and he is like his creation. So they flee from that argument because, again, all of that is their intellectual understanding. And they give that meaning of that verse another meaning. They say, Ar-Rahman uh, ala arsh istawa, it means istola. It means he overtook the throne or he has power over the throne. Or that it means that he, uh, you know, they have various meanings. You know, it means power, it means this, it means that. Because all of this goes back to their intellect. So they take their intellect over the textual expression. When the textual expression is very clear, and the minhaj for understanding the text is very clear. And the classical scholars, the Salaf of this Ummah, their statements are very clear. But even that, they will argue. Imam Malik said when he was asked about this, he was teaching in the Haram. Ya Imam, cave istawa. You know, how did Allah rise above his throne? Imam Malik put, put his head down, began to sweat, as it, as it uh, is mentioned in certain narrations and then he looked up and he said al kafiya al 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 uh, istawa ma uh, ma'lum wa kafiya majhul wa sual anhu bid'a he said this beautiful statement and even this they will turn this statement around which is amazing i've had discussions with ashadis and they even twisted this statement i was amazed imam malik who even, this Ashari was a, a follower of the Medhab in Fiqh of Imam Malik, and he believed he was in Aqidah, but his Aqidah was Yukhalif Imam Malik, was against what Imam Malik said. So Imam Malik said that the Estoa uh, Ma'lum, Estoa rising, is known. It's known to us, it's known in the Arabic language, and it's known in accordance with Quran and Sunnah. But how is unknown? We don't know how Allah rose above his throne. We say that he rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. And asking about it is bid'ah, is innovation. So this is a concrete example of how they use their intellect and their desires over taqdeem al nasus taqdeem, you know, over the Quran and the Sunnah. Subhanallah. A branch fell with a lot of things, so we have to be careful in trying to get out of here and even being here. May Allah protect us. I mean, the fourth advice, a habit of Allah. A nasihat al rabia. Bain dururata irtibat al wathiq bil ulama ahl sunnati wal jama'a. So the fourth piece of advice the Sheikh mentioned was that we have to uh, have the youth be adhering, following, knowing who the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah are, clarifying for them so that way they know who to take knowledge from and they can give them respect and benefit from them. النصيحه الخامسه the fifth piece of advice دع الابتعاد عن الحزبيات وجماعات الاسلاميه السريه so this is very important as well ahabat fillah is that the fifth piece of advice is calling to stay away from hizbiya 
and various groups and sects, and we can we talked about this countless times. The Prophet said, If Tarakati Yahud ala itta was Sabain Firka, if Tarakata Nasara let an attain was Sabain Firka, who said to Tariku Hadi Umala Falata was Sabain Firka, Kulaha fin Nara la Wahida, Kulla men he, or Sulullah Kalaman Kana, ala Mithium Akana, Alehi was Habi. The Prophet said, The Jews are breaking the 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my Ummah is 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'in. So that's clear. Avoid Hizbiyah. Avoid making da'wah to yourself. Avoid making da'wah to your group. Avoid making da'wah to your, to your brothers uh, and your group, your clique, your crew. But make da'wah uh, da to Allah. Call the people to Allah. Azzawajal. I make mistakes. I mess up. I don't want you to follow me. I want you to follow me in good. If I call you to Kitab al-Sunnah, I want you to hear to that. But if you see me mess up, stay away from that. Wa'iyadhan billah min hizbiyah. The fifth, the sixth piece of his advice, Ahabita Fillah. Nasihat to Sadisa, Hatha ala ihtimam bil aqida fi tawheed ilmin wa amalin. So the sixth piece of advice is actually coming back to what he's already discussed, the Sheikh said, and that is encouraging the youth to adhere and give importance to aqida and importance to tawheed in knowledge and in practice. And that is beautiful advice from the Sheikh, and maybe will actually sit down and actually go into detail about uh, and, and, and look at benefits from his treaties. And we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive him of his sins and bless him with genitive for dose and have mercy upon him and to have mercy upon us and forgive us and bless us all with genitive for dose and bless us with ilm and nafia wa rizqan tayyibah wa amal al and protect us from everything harmful. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.